Spotify. Jelly Pops, our latest addition to the scene. He only just got the game recently, but he has been grinding like a fiend. Absolutely. This dude is in our Discord all day, every day, talking about, anyone want to play friendlies? I just got to rank 11. Who just, just got to rank 11? Anyone up right now? And it's like 3 a.m. I don't know when this kid sleeps. I really don't. But we're going to go ahead and get into our first match here. Min Min versus Helix. This is, um, this is a wacky one, in my opinion, because, like, they're both kind of snowball-y characters. Like, if... Uh, oops, I'm sorry. I have the scenes backwards, actually. That is my fault. Um, like, for instance, if... What's up? Oh, uh, can you handle that for me? Yeah. yeah, sorry, homie. Sorry, we're getting stream stuff sorted out here, folks. Like I was saying, this this matchup is definitely kind of wacky because they're both snowball -y characters. Like, Min Min needs her dragon arm charged, whereas, like, Helix needs to get tower mode. If he gets stuck in a cycle of wake-up, he's at a huge disadvantage. And we're sort of seeing that here where, like, neither one character is really getting what they should. Um, can you silence playback into the mic? Because I'm hearing myself. Like, but behind, though. So I think that's leaking into the game audio. Where is it? Phantom stream audio. Anyway, getting back into commentating the match, we're going to try to go through that. Sorry if you can hear that, folks. Jelly Pop's actually holding his own pretty well. Like I said, he's been grinding really, really hard. He's identified really good options like Funchuck and uh, Buff. Immediately, he knows what the good strats are for Helix. However, Giant Dwarf is out here really, really taking his time, letting Jelly Pop commit to something. He knows some good Helix counter, too. He's got Tribolt. He's got Slapamander. He knows what he's cooking with. And honestly, uh, if Jelly Pop needs to, to, wants to win this, he needs to sort of slow it back down a little bit. Uh, maybe play in Shield a bit more. Try to not move as much. Uh, definitely to hold still, because he's getting slapped every time he moves, like right there. Giant Dwarf's just waiting for him to commit to something, a moving an option, and then slap him with that slap commander. My god, this arm is good. Ooh, that duck. That was hot. Really, really, really good way to knock him out of rush there. Jelly Pop knows the angle on those coolerangs. He's so actually doing good work against uh, Giant Dwarf. I think, I think one of Giant Dwarf's... Um, main weaknesses in terms of arms is curve stuff. I think he has uh, an issue with that sometimes because he doesn't he doesn't really keep track of them like he should uh, in my opinion when I've, when I've seen him play. Not to say that he's bad but just to say that like uh, he deals with more straightforward stuff immediately, you know? He, he doesn't really track it super, super well in his head. Um, like he kind of just forgets about it because it's not like immediately in front of him. However, we're going to see... Ooh! Amazing use of the trampoline there by Jelly Pop, defeating Giant Dwarf's rush and landing his own. It's so now back to an even game with that one exchange. Jelly Pop's doing a lot of movement. It seems like he's kind of figured out how to dodge slap a little bit, but Giant Dwarf is still putting up this wall of bullets, of projectiles, doing his best to not get stuck with anything. These arms are both kind of low commitment. Like slap, slap, you kind of commit a little bit, but tri bolt, I mean, that's like. That's basically like you don't you don't got to do anything. You can you can sit there and press that three times, go get some coffee, and then you can move out of the way your opponent's punished. That that arm is so good. Coming down to the last hit, this could be it. Does the whole thing connect? No. Three seconds though. I don't think that's anywhere near long enough to get it. Nope. Giant Dwarf walks away with that on a timeout at just a little bit of health, and we go into game two with Jelly. I'm sorry, not Jelly. Jelly Pop down by one. Giant Dwarf up one point. So I don't think Jelly Pop's going to change too much. He might change arms. He's definitely sticking Helix. Uh, Giant Dwarf is going to stick with it. I'd say... Mm, DNA Lab, I think, would be a good choice, kind of based on what both these players are cooking with. Let's see some character choices here. Thank you all for tuning in, by the way. I'm about to plug this up on Twitter and Discord. Oops. I almost linked my own Twitch. That's not good. <laughs> I should host it, though. I'll see if I can do that. Ooh, let's go. We got Temple Grounds. I love Temple Grounds. This is, like, this, in my opinion, is one of the, the coolest stages in this game. 
All right, immediately starting off the bat, Jelly Pop going to get behind these pillars. He knows he wants to use these curving arms, and they can probably get wider angles than the slap can, which is true. That's accurate. Uh, so he's really going to get more defensive here and use these pillars to not get hit by Tribolt 9 billion times, whereas he's going to try to use Funchuck to sort of curve around. Because Funchuck, if you know how to use that thing right, that can curve around some wacky nonsense. Uh, especially combined with Helix's movement, it makes some really, really good work there. Backed into a corner here, though, and Giant Dwarf's got Rush. Jellypop needs to stop committing to options in the air, or else he's going to get smacked. Giant Dwarf not expecting the grab, though. Oh, you're good. Oh, am, I, am I the one that's behind, or is this... Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. Making sure. <laughs> Sorry, folks, working with the commentary desk back here. All right, so both these players are playing some pretty hard neutral right now, just going for, for hits off something basic, not even really landing anything big. Ooh, very, very risky play from Jelly Pop. Kind of pays off because Giant Dwarf wanted his own risky play trying to get out of there. Didn't realize what hit the pillar was at. You need to keep track of those things. Like, if you don't know what hit the pillar is on, you're going to get smacked with something big. However, you also need to keep track of when your opponent has rush because if you're committed to uh, grab, way up there in the air, you're going to get just absolutely smacked with a big old rush as a result of that. All right, Jelly Pop now down a round in game two here of this best of three. If he does not win here, uh, he doesn't go to losers. He goes to a different round robin match because it's a round robin. But uh, definitely could use a win here, get some momentum back in his favor. I think the buff choice is smart uh, because... Giant Dwarf kind of sort of figured out what to do last round. Honestly, it looks like he's going to get better uh, results with the buff. Because the first round where he whipped that out in game one, he was doing some really, really hot work, and then Giant Dwarf had adapted. That's one thing to Giant Dwarf's credit is that he's he's very, very good at adapting to situations when he can recognize them. You know, like he gets enough information, and they go at his pace. Ooh, that buff almost connected. Very, very solid rush by Giant Dwarf. Honestly, Jelly Pop needs to get more used to just sitting in tower mode uh, and not moving too often. Because right now he's jumping and laning a lot, which is just giving Giant Dwarf more openings. Oh! He moved into the wall and got away with that. Excellent play by Giant Dwarf. That kickflip was so good. Lands on top, unfortunately, and Giant Dwarf takes game two in this set and advances on. I'm going to go find us a different match to put on stream. Maybe myself. I don't know. 